do remember thinking, I was like, I don't know if I can do this. I disagree with you, but if you want to overrule us, you have the ability to do it. I was like daring you to be like, go, well, no, overrule me. It, it's do it. When we were getting ready to go in Japan, it was very useful having you there as like a bit of a voice of stability. I was pretty stressed. It's really good to have Ben around when, in those moments. If I expressed my opinions as strongly as the both of you did, uh, we would all be dead right now. Right. On Jetlag the Game, Sam from Wendover Productions and his writers, Ben and Adam, have traveled around the world in 100 hours, played Capture the Flag throughout Japan, and chased each other and tag across Europe. They're the fastest growing travel show on YouTube with over 500,000 followers, seven seasons, and a Streamies nomination. Join us as we chat with them on how they first met each other, built their friendships, what they love about working together, and what they hate. I'm here today with some very special guests. First of all, the first repeat guest in podcast history, Sam from Wendover Productions. This is such an honor. Congratulations. Oh, we're very excited. I, I think it's fun that you didn't say like in your podcast history, you just said just podcast, podcast it's history. It's never been done before. I'm there, no sure. podcast has ever had a repeat guest before. Well, here's the question. Have you ever seen Sam twice on one podcast? We have I, a podcast. I have, oh yeah, we have a podcast. So, so I've been on that. We are on yeah. it every week. That's a good point. Yeah. So <laughs> I suppose maybe not in podcast history, but I think it's a little unfair to do it on your own pod and count that, right? That's like sure. I suppose he's not a repeat guest. He's a well, continual I've host. I've actually been on NDA by Dave Wiskus twice. No. Ooh, you know, same, but, same scenario, both as an individual. you are a part owner of That's Nebula, NDA yeah. in some ways is a Nebula podcast. It's like the Nepo baby version of yeah. podcasts. Like uh -huh. you're kind of hosting those almost. Sure. We're going to ignore the fact that Nebula is also a part owner of Carrot, with us making this a Nepo Baby podcast too. Oh, yeah. Regardless, this is the first podcast in recorded history that has had Sam from Wendover twice. I will die by this statement. Yes. Very excited. And we also today have Adam and Ben thus forming the jet lag group. If you don't know what jet lag is, I'm very sorry. It's okay. It is the fastest growing how would you describe it? Like, I think you're fastest growing. Well, I'm going to put it in a very particular niche. By definition, you will be the only and thus okay. fastest growing show there. It's the fastest growing thing ever. Yeah. yeah. It's yeah. the fast. It's certainly the fastest growing travel competition show that stars the three of us. Yes, very much so. I like it. Life doubt. and yeah. winning is all about definitions. Mm -hmm. So you recently hit 500,000 subscribers right. and a seventh season and have done an excellent job of making the Amazing Race look like a pile of dog shit. Yeah. Turns out that doing the race. same thing for 30 years straight is not... I, I, I don't want to actually I'm not talk. here to disparage yeah. the Amazing Race at all. It's a lovely program made by, I'm sure, wonderful people. Yeah. And it's made a ton of great television. Here's well, what I'll say. We've never had the Harlem Globetrotters. On jet lag. That's true. So they've got us there. I didn't know they did that. That's yeah, that, that was one. Of, they had two Harlem. It was awesome. Oh, oh, like as yeah. No, I actually remember that. It's a great show, and like truly, it was a massive inspiration. But it was very useful to look at that and see the ways in which we could improve on that format. And you know, I'm going to go one further. I'm going to say not only have you shown the Amazing Race what could have been, and by the way, Globetrotters have not been on yet as a start. True. Instead of bringing on the Globetrotters, you could bring on the adversary which I believe the is Washington the Washington Generals. The oh, Washington Generals. That would be a I very believe. funny guest. That would be a fantastic guest. If anyone who is on the Washington Generals, the team, the fake basketball team that plays the Harlem Globetrotters would like to be on jet lag, hit, hit us up. Hit us up. Is it is it really fake though? Because like you're playing your heart out. Isn't the most- They are not listening. playing their they hearts are, out. Those the Washington Generals not. are not playing their heart. <laughs> they are getting dunked on. The whole show I think is pretty much scripted. But like maybe the Globetrotters are just really good. There was, the, I, I am aware that there was a time when the Washington Generals sort of accidentally won Ooh, the basketball the game shame. that they oh. play, mm. the exhibition things. That's embarrassing. Yeah, it is tough for them. It's tough Gosh. to accidentally win. And yet we on the show, you know, who has ever won jet lag without it happening in part by accident? Well, you know, in, in basketball. Sure. Yeah. Where you have to like score like a hundred times. I would say you don't have to score a hundred. That would be two, 200 points. Huh? 50 times, a hundred points. Well, yeah, you like, Still you like, the, the, anyway, we're getting off track from, I don't know what <laughs> the, this podcast the, the, is about. The point but. is, well, it's actually all just focused on the three of you. And so I oh, like, we can like, we come on our podcast and ramble endlessly every single week. So if you just want us to ramble, 
We can do that. We, you're we're, very, we're you're qualified. very, well, you're very I, good at it. I always have felt like the charm of our podcast is it's just sort of us messing around for the first 15 minutes or so. I think that's a really good- oh, That's the vibe. Like mindset for us to have about it. I feel like we do it on purpose. If we wanted to get right to the point, we certainly could. Oh. I don't know that I could. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> this Same. is news to yeah, I don't know Ben and Sam. Possible. Adam, potentially this is something you always could have done, but I'll also add, I'd like to describe this. Not only have you shown the world what Amazing Race could have been, let's just go one further and say you've reinvented board games too. Sure, I'll take it. Yeah. yeah. Anything nice you have to say about the show, we'll happily accept it. Yeah, yeah we can, I think it's great. We can actually just sit back and let you exactly well I what mean, other things have yeah. we reinvented i think you should list more yeah you know, probably youtube mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah maybe actually true. we have reinvented the platform yeah. of youtube mm -hmm. without a doubt mm -hmm. the funny thing is it is very true because nobody's quite done what you've done now we could go one further and say reinvented media that's correct mm -hmm. right that would mm -hmm. be correct and mm -hmm. i think that that would be true yeah and, yeah. and with yeah. such humility and grace from the three of you two you've still stayed humble and true to your roots yep. and objective Right. Right. Yep. yep. Yeah. As you're about to be very, very shortly on the red carpet. That's why, by the way, this podcast will last precisely an hour because they have a Hollywood moment very, very soon to be honored at the streamies where I hope you win. We may not. Well, be, we're not going to. We but may not be honored there. Well, it's an honor. It's to an be honor invited. to be there. All right. Yeah. Sure. It's an honor to it's be honor there. It's an honor to be nominated. nominated. Yeah. Yeah. It's pretty we're, cool. We're, we're honored. We're going to hear. I feel and honored. And I'm going to call it right now. We're going to lose to the old woman who makes the TikToks about cooking. And, she, and the TikToks are yeah. great. They're great. And I remember last year, she's just like, it was, she's just fucking They've won wet. multiple she times. She just won. Wins. Yeah. It was, yeah. it was like honestly annoying last she's year. She's a juggernaut. Cooking with Linja. Yeah. I know them. They're very, very good at what they do. She but, seems hey, like a nice lady. I harbor just, absolutely no ill will get towards cooking smacked. with Linja. This yeah. could be your year. It could be the first time. Everybody knows about the show and your banter. Everyone. Everyone does know that. That's Truly, true. Well, all 320 yeah. million plus Americans. Mm -hmm. I want to get a little bit more into the personal. So I'm going to ask a few questions, and then we're going to play a few games. And I'm just going to give the viewers a little bit of a clickbait by saying billion dollar companies have played these games, right? When Silicon Valley executives are trying to figure out what it's like to feel human, they go and pay very expensive coaches to walk them through normal things around honesty and intimacy. And you're going to get this for free. And you didn't have to make $100 billion first. Whoa. Including, well, including Carrot, right? Oh, yes. We recently went through one of these leadership retreats ourselves. Future billion dollar company. I'd like to think that we're trying very, very yeah. hard. Billion dollar company in waiting. Appreciate that. Ben, as an individual person, is a billion dollar company. Yeah, I don't like the implication that we're not a one hundred billion dollar company. We, I don't. Yeah. Think we are also that. in waiting. Um, yeah, yeah. Can we just go one further and say jet lags also just reinvented how companies work because yeah, you are true. Yes. and you're just truly innovative. Yeah, yeah. So the real question, the first few I want to ask, can you walk us through the first times you met each other? I'm not saying you got in contact. None of this. Tinder, DM, Slack messaging. Well, we all met on Tinder, we all obviously. Met on Tinder, of yeah, of course. Very good way like of thruple. acquiring writers. Yeah. 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 Wow. So I'm so curious, which two of you were in the Tinder photo versus the third person who was asking to join? Adam saw Ben and I. Yeah. And he was just like, we really which, should, which was, we which really was should we stop. He was just other. like, you cutie patooties. <laughs> we really should stop with this bit because the I'm scared about the art and fan fiction that True. it's going to inspire. Adam is a prude and he is frightened of I'm art. not frightened of it. I just don't want to he be Adam as a kernel of truth here. Um but the gen the, the true answer is um well, you should start because actually chronologically, y'all met before. Sure, we that's met. true. Okay, Ben and I met. Sorry, is was that the end of your question? I think we oh, might. Oh no. Well, well, let's start here. Yeah, Ben and okay. you met. Great. Well, Ben, you you go. You do it. We uh, it, it was in college. We did not go to the same college, but we 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 met at this party in New York for this uh, humor magazine called The American Bystander, which remains the last in print humor magazine in the country, which is cool. Um, and we both had like written things for them and we went to that party and we were the only people there basically under the age of like 65. Yep. And so we started talking and then Adam is, you know, he's, he's very ambitious. So he was like, I think we should write a piece together. And I was like, whoa, okay. Wow. And then we did. And then we wrote a bunch more pieces. Yeah. 
and that's how we, we were pals. Yeah. yeah. What, what prompted the, that's, that's very forward on a first meeting to say we should do this together. I think that the truth is that it was a little bit less like committal than that. I think it was just like, I like writing pieces in collaboration. I like working in collaboration. I prefer not working alone. I feel like I don't like brainstorm or iterate ideas that well alone. I do it a lot better with someone to like talk to and work with and, and iterate with. And so Ben and I like got along and he was a talented humor writer. And I was like, we should write a piece together sometime. Like that would be fun. And you know, which I think is in the humor writing world, a pretty, not, not a crazy thing to say. Like a piece is usually only, you know, like 500, 800 words. That's like, you know, we should, it's not like we should write a book together. It's like, yeah. we should get together for an afternoon and, and, you know, it's like the equivalent something. if it's like a date, right? It's yeah. Short, I think it's, 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 it's not we dissimilar from being like, we should like go get coffee sometime. It's like, yeah. we should work on a piece well, together. It's, it's like fun. a pretty common way to network in like the satire world. Yeah. Yeah. So it's, it wasn't yeah. like a totally out of pocket thing for me to say. And I don't so think. What was the moment where you're like, oh, this isn't just an acquaintance. This isn't just a guy I do pieces with. This is a friend. Let's see. It's a great question. I think it kind of just, it happened over time as with so many things. Well, I feel like we only got to sort of speaking regularly. Like we, we met and then we had like worked on some stuff sporadically, but the only time that we were like talking regularly. Right. And I think oh yeah, 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 yeah. When we, we started a short form humor site together, um, which I think still exists. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think uh, technically. And we spent a long time like trying to design this. Right, I mean, that summer. And everything, and, yeah, yeah. And that was fun. So yeah, the guy that runs the American Bystander was like, we would love to do, you know, uh, we he, you know, was sort of a mentor to both of us. And he was like, you and Ben should work together on something. And we were like, we should start a short form online version of the American Bystander, sort of like their online arm. And yeah, we like designed that website. And that was like, we were talking really regularly. And I would say that's when we like became friends. Yeah. And what about you two? What was the first time you met each other? And the first time you're like, this is also a friend. Have we, have we done that? Have we ever met in person? Uh, this is the first time. Um, we got pizza in Brooklyn. Um, Adam had been kind of like freelancing for mm, a couple months, maybe by that time. Mm -hmm. Maybe a little bit more than that. I think it was maybe like half a year. You had like dabbled mm -hmm. off and on freelance. I believe that was when, this was like the summer after you graduated. Mm -hmm. And I think it was getting to late summer and you were maybe getting to the point where it's like, there's no interesting jobs. Yeah, um, yeah, 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 yeah. And I was in New York for something and, and it was like first opportunity to meet. And it happened to be at the same time that, uh, you know, he was thinking about like what to do as a proper job. And it was about the same time when I was realizing that I could use just like a full-time writer and also justify a full-time writer. I think this was 2018, I want to say. Uh -huh. um, and so that was kind of when it first came up that like maybe we could just bring you on full-time. Because and... I remember it was sort of a casual thing, which was strange about it. You were kind of like, yeah, like... I could kind of use a full-time writer, like if you would be interested in that, like it was, it, we, I think we were both kind of a little non-committal well, about it. Well, because I think I wasn't like a hundred percent sure at that time whether right. I could justify it um, or wanted to. Because the awkward thing is like, I was making my first full-time hire when I was still in college. Right. Um, yeah. And like he was graduated, going to be a full-time hire when I was technically, I mean, not in practice, but technically part-time in YouTube um, while also doing university. Um, but, um, but yeah, and eventually I forget how long it took, but eventually you said yes. Yeah. And then, um, and, and then it was only, it was on a trial period. I remember, I think we were like, we're oh. going to try it for October you, you oh, yeah. and we're both going to see, oh, yeah, I remember but it that. was like yeah. both of us. It was like, we're both going to see if we feel like this is working. I think yeah, was yeah. the kind of mm -hmm. consensus, but it worked out well. And we actually like pretty immediately, I think that was when we went to St. Helena, right? That yeah, yeah. Yeah. Within a couple months, we went and filmed one of the first Nebula originals, right. Um, on the tiny remote Island of St. Helena. And it was just, Adam, myself, and JT, who was a longtime friend yeah. who did like cinematography work for us then. Um, so I, that, that was probably when we got to know each other like properly for the first yeah, time. Yeah, I would say that's when we started to build a personal yeah. relationship. It kind of reminds me when you're interviewing for a consulting or banking job, they always ask, could you pass the airport test? Which is you're at an airport, you're trying to catch a flight home and too bad, the flight's delayed. Can you tolerate each other's presence at the airport without wanting to tear each other's eyes out when you're not in a work context? Oh, well, we have to do that all the time. We have to time. do that a lot. Yeah, yeah, I mean, jet lag. It's yeah. literally in the god of the show. I'm yes. hearing you kind of went through an extreme version. Of it. You're on an abandoned, abandoned, tiny, no, semi but an island, island where there was exactly one flight a week, and yeah. it's about 1,500 miles away from the coast of West Africa. So pretty, pretty isolated. Um, yeah. 
and we were filming there for a week. And it actually, I mean, that turned out great. I mean, that was at the time we had a deal then where the stuff went to YouTube. The video that came out of that, I think is like our third or fourth most viewed on Wendover ever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, So it was a strong start. And I think that pretty immediately led to um, kind of a desire to grow the company even more um, and do more of these bigger projects. And then COVID came and then that made things really difficult. Right. Yeah, mm-hmm. um, but it also made things wonderful because then I came. That was a great segue. Yeah, yeah, the joining of the group, Avengers assembling. So you two knew each other, and you two knew each other, right? Yeah, yeah. Pandemic hits. I'm in my junior year of college. Uh, all the internships get like wiped out. Um, I had applied to a bunch of things. Most of them just didn't respond. I did get one. I got one very funny response from a company that was like, I can't remember who it was, but they were like, hey, we're not doing internships this year, but we just want to let you know you wouldn't have gotten it. <laughs> um, so I was like, okay, cool. So good good context um, in the background. Ben was desperate. Yeah, you could, you could say I was desperate. This is my junior year of college. I had nothing going on. And I was slowly realizing that I had made... Uh, complicated life choice by majoring in literary arts um anyway so he goes where desperate literary arts majors go youtube or adam with the bottom of the barrel bottom of the barrel i i was like adam does would your company ever take on an intern and adam was like maybe yeah and then mm-hmm. uh and then they did and i think and then we went to alaska together and then we, we were supposed to, to you're supposed to do first moment meeting the first moment i met you was in alaska yeah. Was it Alaska or in the airport? Uh, probably it was in Alaska. I think, I think it was, I think you would have met there, met up in there. In Juneau? Yeah. I yeah. Think probably, it was, I think yeah. it was in Juneau. Uh, I mean, the first time I ever talked to you was when you were uh, offering me the internship. And I remember I was like, I'll do it for free. And you countered with money, which I thought was Well, because cool. it's wildly unethical to do <laughs> unpaid internships. Mm. Yeah. Ben, how much, in retrospect, I probably made you go hiking on like day two of your internship or at least day two of us meeting how much did that um detract from your satisfaction with your employer i do remember thinking i was like i don't know if i can do this <laughs> when we when we went hiking and you just you go so fast straight up the, well, it was the a, thing it was a delightful little hike i i like blacked out i don't remember it at all <laughs> yeah this was in alaska a yeah. delightful little hike oh no it was like literally like just in the neighborhood that we were staying in our airbnb it was, it was a really nice one. So, so you, you meet this guy. It was like who, eight miles. I feel like that's we've spent hike. 20 minutes answering this one question somehow. Well, no, that's because the three of you have such rich stories and histories. Sure. And yeah. as in any throuple, it's like you know each other, you know each other, they know each other. I am sensing a common thread, though. That Number we know one. Each other? Yeah, well, yes, you all know each other, oh. right? That yeah. is the common thread. It's is a pretty that we all know powerful each other. one to start everything right. with. Number two, it all started with, hey, let's work together. And now you're like working together, but also friends. Okay. Well, we're actually started. The thing that I was going to say earlier is how I got introduced to Adam is that I was drunk at a Christmas party and mentioned to a friend like drunkenly um, that I was like, oh, maybe I need to do more stuff and I may need to hire a writer. And um, I think I maybe tried to hire him. Sort I of. think, yeah, you soft offered it. Yeah. To him. Like soft offered did, it. Did, to he, him. did he soft accept it? No, no. no. He's, actually, he, he he, he's actually multiple times. Um, through history come like dabbled with the idea of working with us and then was like no. yeah it's happened like two or three yeah. times it's <laughs> awesome why the commitment issues? it's a huge it's honestly an awesome power move and i love it i love yeah. it. Uh-huh. it uh it, a shout out to jamie who has uh yeah gotten really close to us hiring yeah. and not done it a bunch of times each of you can jaunt off to a remote destination and that's where you bond well we were doing yeah that because yeah. we would get together in person in that way but also i will answer your question which i feel like we sort of skirted which was like about the idea of friendship which is like it is a sort of strange and complicated thing of like that sam is our employer but we now do have like you know, these personal relationships with him, like where we've traveled with him and like gotten to know him well. And like, I do think of Sam and I as friends, but it also is a thing where like, that was, I think a slow thing that happens over Mm -hmm. time. But there's also like the complication of there that he is our boss also. And so like- I mean, I think a lot of people in the show like assume that we're just like a bunch of friends who got together and made a thing, which is kind of, I mean, I think it's actually good that people perceive it that way. Yeah. But like, we do genuinely maintain like a pretty- not formal, but like, you know, uh, 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 there are aspects of a formal, you know, workplace employer, yeah. em, you know, relationship. Well, but I think there's an extent to which it's like, it it would be, that's like important and like ethical, mm-hmm. you know, like it would be, yeah. it would be unethical for you not to 
well, for us mm-hmm. not to treat it like what it is, which is that like you are our employer. Right. And I, you know, I think, and as a company, we try to make sure that like, we're not like, I mean, you know, I think a lot of creator companies and well, a lot of creators don't run how they do things as companies. And that leads to issues. Whereas like we very much think of ourselves. And, and this is another thing that I think people sometimes are surprised about when, you know, we talk about is like, we very much think of ourselves as like, we are a company and we have meetings, we have uh, we have our all hands meetings. We have, you know, uh, we have benefits, we have health insurance. Like we, we have all the normal company things and we do things in sort of a normal company way sometimes. Um, yeah, well, like, cause I think that often you, you sort of, what you're getting at is like, sometimes companies have a thing where they're like, well, we're all a family right. and whatever. And it's Which like, that's actually kind of bullshit. Not like yeah, that's toxic, toxic, yeah. toxic mm-hmm. and like unhealthy and all that stuff. And I think it's also important, uh, that, um, like, I don't personally think like, especially like in Colorado where, um, where we're all together, like, I don't personally think it's a healthy environment for like, uh, for like basically everyone to be like, we're completely friends. We do everything together. We, you know, we work together, we play together, we do everything. Like, I don't think that's actually healthy long-term. Like people need work-life balance. Yeah. But I also don't want any of that to suggest that like, you know, we don't like care about no. each other, you no, know, like. But I think it's it's just like we've, I think we actually have found a very healthy. Yeah, balance. I agree. Yeah. This is an industry where broadly speaking, that's a, it's a very complicated line. And I think right. very few people are able to do it well. Yeah. I think like you're just sort of starting to see examples of like companies that think of themselves like companies and not just like mm-hmm. groups of friends doing stuff together. Because I feel like for a long time, that's like what people thought of you know, YouTube groups mm-hmm. as being yeah. is like, which, which is funny. Cause like you wouldn't necessarily think that about a TV show. If you watch a TV show or right. like whatever. Um, well, cause I think there's an implication like people perceive like YouTube, you know, like y- they perceive YouTube as not something that you can make genuine money off of. And therefore they perceive it like people, they just must be doing this for the love of the game. We all have options to make, um, money in other ways, as we were just talking about before this, like, uh, you know, especially like these guys could have gone down the, uh, selling their soul route. I don't to know why you always say that. I couldn't, I like, can't okay, do maybe less, maybe less so Ben, but like Adam, <laughs> a, you know, Adam could have, and nearly did end up in like corporate, corporate land, yeah. um, you know, using a Yale major and, you know, getting like, you know, you can, you can basically take a Yale major and turn it into a $150,000 a year consulting It's like a gig. passport to right. yeah. corporate life. Yeah. And, and like, you can very easily get that, you know, consulting gig that starts at 150 K and you're going to be making like 200, 300, 400 K within like five years, but you have absolutely zero work. Like, like, like those options existed. Um, so like there is a little bit of a compromise for the love of the game. But I think sometimes people assume that if people are working together on a platform like YouTube, um, they must just be doing it purely for fun um, and not for a job because they don't understand that it can exist as like a proper company. Right. Well, what always cracks me up is there are lots of people who see jet lag and they're like, wow, they must just be paying to do this for fun. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. It's like, like, this is our job. Again, I think that's like a good sign. Yeah, yeah no, like, totally. But but and it's it, but it's like you know we this is a like fairly high budget show to make, and it and mm-hmm. it consumes you know multiple full time equivalents. I mean, um, within our company, and then many more multiple full time equivalents um, in our production company um, that we work with. So it's it's yeah. like a it's like a proper thing. But again, I also like just do want to emphasize again, like that we're not, I feel like we're saying all this and people are going to be like, they don't like each other. They all, whatever, like we all like each other. We Mm -hmm. all care about each other. Like we all like have a lot of respect for each other. We all enjoy working together. Like all of that stuff is like true. I'm not, I I don't want people to take this as us, like trying to discount the importance of our relationships to each other. But I think it is important to clarify of like, there are certain, like, I think ethical, you know. Yeah. I mean, I think, you know, maybe it's more like, it's not that we do this because we're friends, but we're friends because we do this. Yeah. I think that's Um, like, that's so beautifully, what an apt turn of phrase to share. And I kind of love too, the concept you said, we're not a family because that means you're a team. Mm -hmm. You, each of you could have chosen to do something different. Family, it's supposed to be unconditional. Right. You're stuck in it. But it is conditional. Exactly. They treat you well or not. They're your family. But because you get to choose, you can Mm -hmm. keep working together as a team or you can also choose not to. Mm -hmm. And I get what you mean when, for example, my co-founder and myself, we genuinely like each other, Mm -hmm. but also we're in business together. Yeah. Yeah. 
I mean, I, I think like, I mean, there's common like startup advice of, well, like the, the I mean, I know that like the co-founder relationship is so tenuous and like VCs, when they're looking at companies, that's one of the top things that they evaluate is the actual relationship. I mean, from what I've heard, the common advice is not best friends, but you got to know the person ahead of time, yes. right? Um, so like, like you almost don't want someone that you're too good. Like it's really like we were best friends and now we're not quite anymore mm. because it's evolved. And mm -hmm. I would say that applies not only to start founders, but you three aren't just a company. You're also online content personalities. Yeah, that's a whole nother dynamic of it. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. YouTube initially, because it's so grassroots, it was, oh, people just doing this maybe for fun because they didn't even think they could make money. And as the industry's evolved, you've also seen how sometimes it doesn't work. I think a great example is Smosh, mm -hmm. right? Anthony and Ian have publicly disclosed they didn't talk to each other for years at one point. Or take mm -hmm. another example, Mythbusters, right? Yeah, I'm just, it's perfect. Yeah. Adam yeah, Savage yeah, has yeah, gone yeah. on record saying he and Jamie, they can't stand each other. Right, yeah, as yeah. People. And I wanna be clear, that is not what we are no. saying about our relationship with mm -hmm. each other at all. Yeah, you actually like each other, which leads yeah. to my next question. I'd love to know in the context of the relationship that you've built all three with each other, what are some of the happiest moments where you felt most connected to each other? And some of the moments where you felt frustrated, which is connection, albeit in a different way too. Oh, that's these a are, good question. Spicy. I think like, like happiest, I mean, just like finishing a season, honestly. I mean, when it goes well. Yeah. yeah. It's like, it's really nice to just finish a season. It's gone well. We're usually just like popped into a random cool location. Yeah. And it depends on the season, but like we've had some really nice, like New Zealand was really nice. We finished in, we finished at the Southern tip of New Zealand and we went up to Queenstown and just had like a really nice casual dinner by the lake in Queenstown. Yeah, that was, was great. Just a gorgeous spot. And it was just like really nice to be able to like celebrate that we've finished, we've done the job. You know, oh, and, right. and like with months of work leading up to that moment, yeah. um, in terms of like the pre-production, we've done the job, it's in the can, we get to fly home tomorrow, and tonight we just get to like relax and, you know, sit back and- Yeah. Um, I also think there were a lot of moments in Japan where like, you know, we, yeah. we were there, we were having so much fun playing that game, mm -hmm. like- Yeah, Japan was an especially fun season to film yeah. together, I think. We had an awesome time. Partially because of just like exploring such a unique environment together. Yeah. And we had like more time than usual yeah. time in mm -hmm. yeah. Japan. Like I feel like us that day we up like by like Yairo Station and stuff, yeah, we were like an all time. really having fun that yeah. day and like enjoying each other's company. Yeah, I mean, that was a mix of like really cool gameplay, really cool environment and um, it, well, like really, yeah, that mix. Uh, so yeah. it, was, it was a lot of fun. And also just like, I, I really enjoyed like, I feel like that was a day where both of us were like at the top of our game. Yeah. <laughs> so it was it was fun to go head to head. Yeah. Well, also it's like I really enjoy playing against Sam. Mm -hmm. Like I love playing games. I love competing. I love that Sam also loves competing. I love competing against him because I know he's good at it and smart. And like I think, you know, I, I can't speak for you, but like I really enjoyed like that tussle with you and that competitiveness. And like, I don't know, that was, if you're talking about like when we like appreciated each other, like that was a moment where I was like right. appreciated like Sam and his like strategic mind and like his approach to the game and like all that stuff, like really enjoyed like that. You know, I liked it a little them. bit more like in what we're showing here when you were a little less good at it. <laughs> cause I, I noticed I feel, he's very competitive. <laughs> well, like, I, cause I feel like I was like, I don't feel like I've actually gotten much better at the game through the seasons. If anything, I've actually like, I'm a little bit less hungry for it these days. So I feel like that has led Why to- Why is that? <laughs> we've just done it a lot. And and like, I, I sort of, at, at a point, like consciously tried to become a little bit less competitive because I think there were times when I was a little too engaged by the, the gameplay. Um, and that kind of got in a way of just like the entertainment and my enjoyment of it. But, um, but like, I think Adam has like improved with every season and I've pretty much stayed static. Cause like these early seasons, it was really easy for me to just exploit the fact that they weren't as good at travel Hmm. like the actual travel process. Yeah. Well, that was like the whole premise of the show right. was Initially like, it balanced, was the, yeah. like Sam has all this travel knowledge, but we designed mm -hmm. the game. But now it's like, we have some of the travel knowledge right. too. And so but also you're experience. a lot more involved in the game design. That too, yeah. You know, mm -hmm. too. I mean, you always were, but I feel like you've gotten even more involved in yeah. the most recent seasons. Mm -hmm. Well, certainly I, th well, I think we've rebalanced it where at the beginning I was like involved through all the steps. Now we know the steps that I don't need to be involved with, totally. like like challenge design. Yeah. Um. So so like we focus my involvement on overall game design. Totally. Whereas I think that's the thing where we really take advantage of like the working relationship that we right. built to make the games. Yeah. But that also I think parlays into an answer to your other question, which is I mean, 
a time when we were frustrated with each other was mm -hmm. we had been working on the New Zealand season. And I think we had thought we had sort of agreed on a broad concept. And then Ben and I went off to sort of like, you know, flesh it out a little bit more. And then we kind of came together and essentially like threw it out. And I remember that was a really frustrating moment. But <laughs> yeah, I, yeah. I do think that ultimately we came out stronger for it because we got a much better understanding of how we needed to collaboratively work on how we developed mm. the games. And that we realized we needed to be even more integrated in the development, especially like early on. And mm -hmm. I feel like it has really improved not only like, I think it improved the games. I think it improved like our working relationship of designing the games. Mm -hmm. I feel like it like, you know, it, 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 the way that we learned from that and dealt with it, like improved yeah. our process. And I, I mean, I think there's been, you know, we've worked collaboratively on a, collaboratively on a lot of stuff. And I think, you know, the, the strength of, of our collaborative working relationship on creative projects is the fact, like the strength of any team that does that, I think, is the firmness of opinions. Um, mm. Like what I, being often in charge of these creative processes really don't like is when people just listen to what I say <laughs> constantly, because that's not useful. Like the whole point of having a team is that the creative process is enhanced by the team and everyone injecting and evaluating opinions. So on the flip, uh, you know, so that's why I think Adam is, is Adam especially and Ben too, but, uh, but Adam comes in with the strongest opinions, um, about any creative thing. Yeah. Ben does too. He's just a little bit less, um, firm sometimes what? you've learned, you've learned how to, how to, how to, um, how to give it the opinions the same way. Well, <laughs> If, if I had, if, if I expressed my opinions as strongly as the both of you did, uh, we would hole. all be dead right now. Right. Well, I, like, I think, I think like Ben through time has, has, um, and like, I think, well, I think we've all sort of settled into a much better yeah, um, way of doing it. Whereas like Ben in the past maybe didn't like assert the opinions as strongly as he could have. Yeah. Um, whereas Adam and I probably asserted them too strongly. Yeah. Um, and I think we all know now kind of understand the dynamic, which is we all really need to have those strong opinions. Yeah. And 99% mm. of the time we reach some sort of consensus through mm -hmm. that process. But the, the only tricky bits is at the end of the day, like if we really don't agree, which is very, very rare these yeah. days, it is my decision and that can lead to frustration. Mm -hmm. And it's not, it's a situation that I always really want to avoid. Yeah, um, it's really rare that you have yeah, to pull Yeah, and, and much rarer than it used to be. Yeah. I feel like oftentimes, like, one of the biggest sources of frustration is that Sam will refuse to put his foot down. And so we'll be at, like, a standstill about a particular right. thing. For yeah, well, we'll, we'll I, almost be, like, daring him. Like, like we'll please. get to a point where I'm like, I disagree with you, but if you want to overrule us, you have the ability to do it. And I feel like that almost, like, I feel like that was, like, a bad thing for me to do. Cause I was, I was like daring you to be like, go, well, no, overrule me. It, it's do it. It's yeah. It's the mix of just like, you know, what I was just mentioned of just like, I really don't want to, I really don't want to like, you know, pull rank and just decide. Right. But also I, you know, I, I, as like a bit of a management philosophy, um, and it's inefficient, but I think it leads to good stuff in the long term. If we disagree, I want to at the very least understand why we disagree. Totally. Like what sort of like at, at the core of like w the creative disagreement, what is leading to it? Is it just like pure opinion or is there some different way that we're seeing it or something? Mm -hmm. Because usually you can learn really useful stuff through understanding why you disagree. It's very inefficient in the moment. Um, but, uh, that's, that's at least sometimes why we spend so long on disagreements. There's been some bad times. I remember like arguing about one sentence in a script for like an hour one time. Yeah. Um, but, uh, we've gotten much better at it. Well, I, I also think that we have all like, or at least you and I like both have gotten a lot, like have really like moderated a tendency to like shut ideas down. Like, mm -hmm. at least I feel like, you know, I've tried to work like been work, worked on that where like if one of us has an idea like we're willing to like discuss and iterate on it for a little bit and mm -hmm. contribute as opposed to just like being like well that doesn't work that doesn't work yeah. like and just arguing that it doesn't yeah, work. yeah and i think it's it's you know on the broadest level it's an understanding of the creative process yeah. of, of how you take ideas and develop them and brainstorm and all that and and the understanding that like that group dynamic is, is really powerful um, i mean it, it is amazing sometimes like for example capture the flag that entire season mm -hmm. we developed basically the entire season and i'm going to say eight hours 
in terms of like actual collaborative brainstorming. In terms of the collaborative brainstorming in, in that like led to the probably stuff. Probably true, yeah. Like, is, there yeah. was a lot of work that fed into those eight That's hours. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But fast. like in terms of the decision-making process yeah. of like, and, and how, how it often works, like this is getting really nuanced, but like, how it works is we have we have these big meetings where like there that's where we're deciding that's where we're assembling the season and then you know ben and adam with more time on this they're often doing the work that feeds into that yeah so that means sometimes like some game mechanic brainstorming it's a lot of like testing game mechanics mm -hmm. and simulation and all that but in terms of the actually like evaluate so like there's there's a lot of prep but in terms of like assembling the season yeah that's a pretty efficient process just because i think like we're able, we've optimized the creative process so much that we're able to move through it really fast. Yeah, I feel like over time, I just have enjoyed working collaboratively with mm -hmm. us as a team more well, and more we've as we've gotten better, gotten better at it. At it. Yeah. yeah, like it's fun to work with a team that works well. Yeah. Yeah, I really resonate a lot when you made the earlier point on, hey, Ben initially wasn't sharing his opinions as strongly. And Ben, you said the truth in it. If I had, we would all be dead right now. And I, I say that as someone... I very much felt in my partnership with my co-founder in your shoes, I'm often scared to disagree. And now this is me, not necessarily you. I am often scared to disagree because it's so tricky when it's like, is it who cares more? Mm -hmm. Right? And that doesn't feel like a good way to do no, things. No, that's like the worst way to decide. No. Yeah. Yes. And so many times I'd find myself being like, you know what? I don't agree with this. We're going to do this for the good of the relationship. Mm -hmm. I find myself doing that a lot. And what I personally have had to figure out and struggle with is, hey, guess what? I'm a human being. And there's only so many times I can do that with the best of intentions mm -hmm. until I begin to resent him and myself. Yeah. Because then I'm like, well, now it feels like it's a really big deal for me to assert my own idea. Mm -hmm. right. And now I'm like, gosh, and if it doesn't go well, it's like a whole thing in my head, not yeah. necessarily in his head, but in my head, I'm like, there's such a bar. And he's, all, he's also come to me and he's been like, man, I feel like you're not engaging with me on stuff anymore. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think that that game of chicken of who cares more, it's it's really dangerous yeah. to, mm -hmm. to a decision-making process. And and like, we've seen that in the past and and I think we don't have that now. No, and, I can't wow. think, I can't think of a recent time where we've had that. Yeah, but like, it, it's totally something that like we've evolved away from because yeah. I think we've recognized how it's just so counterproductive. Yeah. Well, um, I also think one thing that's helped a lot is that like, when we came into the early seasons, we all had very different ideas about how this should all be working. Right. And yeah. I think that we're all much more on the same page yeah, now. That's so true like too. Yeah. And and you know, it was it was it was it was a that I think that's a really good point because like I came in with a lot of YouTube experience and I was trying to apply that to this really novel concept. Mm -hmm. Um and I think a lot that was the source of a lot of disagreements. For example, like when we had to really like scrap that New Zealand season, yeah. Um a, a big reason why was like there's a point with every YouTube channel that grows fast where they misunderstand what led to their success. They misunderstand out of this broad package of what you're offering, what is the core that people are engaging with. Mm. And I believed that the concept that we had at the time did not engage with that core. And because it was happening at the exact moment where you see that shift, in a lot of channels, I was really worried about it because mm -hmm. it's something that I've seen time and time and time again. So, so and, and there were, I think, other other more minor instances of that kind of same thing. But, um, you know, it, it's a very tenuous, like that's basically like, that was where I provided the most value, I think, in those early seasons. Like these days, the show kind of runs itself. Like I help with the game design, but like there's not a lot of like build to do. Yeah. So I was very conscious with making sure that I was actually hoping uh, you know, providing that value, even to the point of frustration at times. Well, I think you can really see it in the difference between Crime Spree and season mm -hmm. one of like the Sam influence and how much more YouTube optimized yeah. it is. Because mm -hmm. yeah. Sam, you really were not involved in the post-production for Crime Spree. Post-production, not at all, at all. basically, yeah. I mean, and you were involved in the design a bit, but I mean, as it's mm -hmm. shown in the, you know, show, like yeah. we, pres you don't know a lot of what's gonna well, happen. It was weird sort of because it was, it was like, Basically, it was it was more or less my concept, um, mm -hmm. at least the, the very broad, high level travel competition thing mm -hmm. um, that we basically like handed off to. I mean, mostly Adam. Adam was in charge of the project at the time. Yeah. Um, and then and then it led to that. And then and then with how well it worked, basically translated it to YouTube, yeah. which was it was a fairly because like 
we had a concept that we know broadly this idea works. Like we validated the broad idea of travel right. competition yeah. in this sort of off the rails, uh, you know, unscripted manner. And then we had to translate to a format of, that worked on YouTube, um, which was a process that took us, I think, the first three seasons, basically. Yeah, to really figure it out. Um, well, because, and I think that there were a lot of things that like, you know, Crime Spree just had like a lot of things going on that wouldn't have made sense on YouTube. And mm -hmm. I think you were really right. instrumental in our pro in the team process of mm -hmm. understanding. Like, I remember like when we were first filming, like the first intro and we were like writing out what it should be. And like, we had like a joke to start with and all this stuff. And you were like, no, like it needs to start with us saying we're playing Connect Four, but America. And we were like, oh, yeah. really? We don't need to start with like a joke or like break it. And you were like, no, it should start with this. And now like, right. I feel now so that basic I, now. Yeah, yeah, no, but it's funny. Cause it's like, cause I just didn't mm -hmm. know YouTube as well. Right. then, And yeah. I was like, I don't know, really do we need, and now I'm like, well, of course you were right. I, I think you were mm -hmm. totally right about that. But like that, I think is where your experience mm -hmm. of understanding the platform really was instrumental in shaping mm -hmm. like you know, like getting rid of some of the extraneous stuff yeah. and streamlining it into something that was more mm. YouTube friendly. Mm -hmm. I, like I mean, that. Ben, would you agree with that? Trying to think about like logistical problems going forward for something that's not a one-off, but something that we would be doing constantly yeah. oh, for yeah. a really long time. Like I remember we were really sad to lose the narrator. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. We really wanted the narrator. Yeah, but like, yeah. And that say you were and you were so right about that. It would that. be such a headache to try and get this guy oh, every God. time yeah. for every episode. Like that would have mm -hmm. been a... Yeah. Cause I remember we were like, we were so obsessed about like, well, it's weird for Sam to do the voiceovers cause he's also a character in the show. Yeah. So like, that's confusing, whatever. don't even realize. Yeah, yeah, you're the but, but then, yeah. but I, th I think you were just like, first of all, like it's brand consistency. And second of all, just like, we don't want to have to hire a narrator. And then it's yeah. like, I can't imagine if we like, we're trying to get this guy off Fiverr every it's time. It's hard to get like, this guy sometimes to do his yeah. narration. Well, yeah. So. <laughs> but, yeah, I, 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 well, was I that, also, was that an eye roll? no, no, I, that was an eye roll imagining trying to hire that guy every single oh, yeah. time. Mm -hmm. Well, it's, it's also like, and not to spend too long on this, but like, I think that's an interesting thing where it, at the beginning, it, especially, but even still now it's like a lot of different people get different things out of the show. And I think right. there's a lot of different buckets of viewers who want different things mm -hmm. from it. And that was where I think when we had that big disagreement, like a lot of that was coming from where it was like, you know, there are different people who come to the show for different things. And I mm -hmm. think that like that can sometimes make it hard when you're trying to figure out what to optimize for it yeah. and what and it, not and it's, to. And it's tough because you can always point to, but these exactly. people. Exactly. Yeah, right. Because exactly. there's different, different audiences. Things. Yeah. And I think, you know, it's like some people come to the show because they're really into the strategy mm -hmm. and they really want like complex, interesting strategy stuff that they can lock into. And then other people I think come to the show because they like, love travel and they want to see cool and interesting places. And some people come to the show because it's funny to them and like fun and silly. Mm -hmm. And some people come to the show because they're invested in our relationships with each other. And I think a lot of people are like interested in all of those things, but like, you know, if we go too hard, I think we now have sort of figured out the balance, yeah. but like, I think there were temptations at various times and disagreements at various times yeah. of like, we need to be more focused on the strategy. No, we need to be more, more focused on the fun and the silliness. No, mm -hmm. we need to be more focused on showing people cool places. And yeah. like, I feel like we've now gotten to a sense of understanding the right mix of those things. And the fact that better. we basically have to do it all. Yeah. Well, we have to serve mm -hmm. all of those things. Yeah. It's a balance. I'll say mm -hmm. for myself, I actually really like you break down those segments. For me, it actually has always been the relationship. Mm -hmm. which is obviously why I wanted to chat with you today. So I'd like to end on something focused around appreciation where I want for each of you just get two, three minutes where the other two are just going to say what they appreciate about you and you're just going to have to sit there. Oh, and this is going to make me so uncomfortable. Oh, have you ever seen Sam try and give a compliment I before? Did you watch yeah. season five? Well, he's, he's, like, it's hard for, for him to that. take compliments. No, and it's, it's hard worst. for him to, it's, uh, to give compliments. Oh, this is going to be hard. fun. I think we should start by doing Sam. Oh, I love the concept. And the whole thing is you're just going to have to sit there. I'm going to disassociate. The only thing you can say is thank you. That's okay. all you can say. That's we wild. don't want to hear any protestations or justifications. This is maybe the worst thing you've ever done. Sam, and I'm going to make eye it. contact with you the whole time. I'm not. Very intimate. I don't know. I could start. I mean, I think there are a lot of things, Sam, that I, 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 I'm doing this genuinely. I really, okay. I think this actually is a lovely little opportunity. Um, I think one thing I really appreciate about you and have always appreciated about you is the extent to which you operate with integrity. I feel like you have been in a lot of positions, you know, with the amount of, you know, like power or influence you have over like, you know, any number of things and us and employees. And I feel like at every step of the way, 
I have always really felt like you have operated with integrity, with an intention of wanting to do the right thing and to do right by us, to do right by your employees, to do right in a general sense. And that's something that I feel like I've appreciated about you and seen like from day one. Um, I'm, I'm going to, Ben can do one. I have more, but like, yeah, I'm going to do a, <laughs> he's not going to be able to handle this. I, here's oh. the thing. No, no, no. I think that you cultivate a very stable environment and in a field that is deeply unstable. Like I feel like you make all of the employees at this company feel so secure like, and I mean, I'm sure that I, and yeah. Adam and I have talked about this all the time. That is uh, like unheard of. I mean, I can't, I can't think of anyone I know who does anything similar, who feels as like stable yeah. in their job. Totally. But I think like a lot of that is because you know what you're doing. But I think a lot of it is also like you have, you know, you have a very like consistent and stable demeanor. Like it, I, I've never been like, I I don't know who's who's driving the ship. I don't know what the hell's going yeah. on. Like this is going off the rails. Like I've always been like, yeah, this Sam knows what he's doing. And especially to be put in a position of like management like that at such a young age, sort of kind of thrust into it, like to have been able to do that, I think it's really impressive. Yeah. I mean, how many how many people at the company are younger than Sam? Less than half. Yeah. I mean, that's crazy. To be like supporting people who like one of which has kids. That's, yeah. that's got, I mean, I can't imagine. I could never do that. Yeah. yeah. I mean, another thing that I genuinely appreciate about Sam is just that like, and this has also always been the case, just like that you're really fucking smart and good at what you do. And I've always appreciated so much and respected just like, I've always appreciated, like respected your opinion. I've always found a ton of value in it. Even when I disagree with you, I've always like, found value in what you have to say. I've always found value in your input. I like, I genuinely value and appreciate your input on like creative work that we're doing or that I'm doing, you know, or whatever. And like, that is not true of a lot of people. Like, like I always am like, ex you know, looking forward to like getting your notes on the episode and like hearing what you have to say about it. Cause I'm like, I, I always think that you're going to add value to it, you know, which I think like there could totally be a world where I get the notes and I'm like, well, I have to fucking implement these notes on the edit that, you know, like, cause I have to, but like, I always want your input on things because I really find value in it because I like fundamentally respect your opinion, which I think, you know, I'm can be kind of a pretentious sometimes. I don't respect everyone's opinion all the time. I'll add one more and then we're going to shift on. You're very honest in a world where everyone has agendas and motives, and that's not a bad thing. You are just who you present yourself to be. And that's something, especially if I've been figuring out YouTube and the people in it and my own relationship to the people I work with, you're one of the most honest people I know, period. And I'm just grateful that I got to work with you and to also build a friendship relationship with you. Thank you. <laughs> All right. That was Sam. Now he let's, that wasn't as bad. He endured. I endured. That wasn't too bad. Thank now you. Now let's do. I appreciate it. Maybe this whole podcast is just a setup for us to roast Sam with compliments. Now. Oh, we're doing the, we're doing the insult section now? No, yeah. no. We're not two minutes insults. of compliments. Two <laughs> minutes of insults. Love and hate. So now we're going to do two minutes of appreciation for Adam. I appreciate Adam's seemingly infinite creative energy. I, I'd say up there with some of the absolutely like most, like there's a certain creative energy that the, that the most engaged, successful YouTubers have or creators have that is just like seemingly endless, which is really hard to have like endless energy that Adam has that same sort of like spark. And, and that really translates into the shows, I think, because like Adam will put in the, Adam will put in the work when it kind of sucks like, 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 I think the extrapolation of understanding how, like, filling out, like, some annoying bureaucratic document um, or, like, dealing with Slack messages at 10 p.m. or, like, how that translates into the creative product, that just requires so much creative energy. It's clear how that energy translates into the show. And I think it's been a good, like, role model for me. Um especially as I've been doing this for so long and have to remind myself what leads to good stuff for like what I need to do um, to, to keep that level. Yeah, I mean, it's, I have no doubt in my mind that the show would have absolutely fallen apart 
at this point without Adam. Because I there are there are so many It's a complicated show. Times. It's a yeah. complicated show. There are so many times when like it 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 can feel like Adam is kind of just like dragging us up the hill. Like I, I people wonder about like burnout all the time. They're like, how are you guys not burnt out? How are you guys not burnt out? And I think the fact of the matter is like sometimes I mean I'm like exhausted. And like sometimes Sam is way too busy. And Adam is always there and he's like moving us along. And it's uh, it's a skill set that I like can't even begin to wrap my my mind around. Um, but it's so deeply necessary. Um, I feel like every team needs an Adam. And our Adam is Adam. <laughs> um, yeah. No, it's very good for our team to have the original Adam. Yeah. yeah. Um, I, it's a, okay, my turn again. I will add, I really appreciate... Uh, Adams, um, I, I, like Adam does a very good job. Well, really both of these, so I don't want to cannibalize from Ben's, but, but both of these guys, um, just really seem to enjoy the dynamic of, of, in, of like fostering community and, and fostering, um, you know, making, making our show more than just the show. Um, and I think it's so useful that Adam enjoys that so much, um, and does it so genuinely because that really just as I think brought the show to the next level i will add can i do two you can do it. adam yeah. always uh, adam also seems to always have like the company and the broader context um in mind i sometimes i think more so than personal and, and i think that translates to the first point of like creative energy where it's like applying the the minute to minute stuff to like the broader context um, and I think that translates more broadly into stuff, which, which really makes me feel like Adam is like not just an employee, but like long term creative partner. The next thing I was going to say is I think Adam is a very good caretaker, which mm -hmm. I think is like very necessary in this specific context, because like go, like if you're traveling all around the world, you're in this these stressful situations, exhausting situations like I am always glad that Adam is there because Again, I'm I'm never like, I'm gonna die. Uh, <laughs> Adam Adam has ensured at every moment that I do not die, um, and I think that that applies to his work on the show. But I think that applies to his just his his everyday life. Um, he's gonna be a good dad. Oh, thank you guys. That really means a lot to me. Oh, I, I genuinely dad. mean the good that. dad thing. I think is a good point. Yeah. Yeah, I think. I can see that you give really good dad vibes. Thank you, Eric. Adam is like sliding into, I feel like more and more like domesticated life. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah in a yeah, very yeah. natural way. Yeah. As, oh yeah. <laughs> it's the best. So Ben. Ben. Sam and Adam, are you ready? Oh yeah. Yeah. Let's I have so it. many things I could say about Ben. So many things. Oh, let's go. Boom. I just love working with Ben so much. And it's just really just one of the great like joys of my life that that we found each other and that we were able to end up that we work together every day. Like I I really do. And I've said this to like all, I've said this like unprompted to Maeve at times. I'll just be like, I feel so lucky to have found like a creative partner that I, that for so many reasons that it just, I love working with so much. I, I think just like, I trust your opinion so much. Ben and I work together one-on-one -on -one so, so much, like every day. Um, and just what an incredible blessing to get to do that with someone who it it's such a great experience to do it with. Uh, this is a minor one, so I'll, I'll go quick with it. But Ben is just genuinely very funny. And, yeah, I, and, I, really and I think part of it is like, just Ben hits my sense of humor very well. Um, but it's, I'm not the easiest person to get to like actually laugh out loud, but Ben is one of the few people that can do that. Um, so I, and Ben, you know, delivers a lot of laughs when I watch my first, you know, assembly cuts of a jet lag. So I appreciate that. Um, I'll, it was a, that was a quick one. So I'll, I'll, I'll double up, um, quickly, but I think we just get along very well. And Ben is, um, Ben is just a very like kind um, open person to be with. And, you know, when we're across, uh, the, on the other side of the world, um, super stressed, um, because like, for example, I remember when we were, when we were getting ready to go in Japan, it was very useful having you there as like a bit of a voice of stability at times. Um, <laughs> Or, or like, uh, to almost just calm me down. Cause I was, I was pretty stressed. Um, 
And, and it was, that was useful. So it, it's, it's, it's really good to have Ben around when, in those moments. Well, and I also will add that like Ben is funny in such a rare way where like Feels it's not natural well, it's so yeah exactly exactly yeah. it's not that ben is always out here like making jokes that are really funny it's just that like ben has a quality where just like he is funny in his very existence which is like a combination of i think like both intentional and unintentional things where like you have this ability, which I think you are mostly doing consciously, but in some ways it's like an unconscious, just like the funniness is in your bones or just like the way you word things, just the way that you choose to speak about like something that happened or something you did that you will recount something is so, so funny. And it's like, just if you would change the words around, it wouldn't have been funny, but it just is your intonation and your like word choice, just like, makes the thing just being around you i just feel like is all so often a joyful experience because it's kind like of annoying sometimes because yeah. it's like i, I want to be that naturally funny yeah no i i could never be as naturally funny as ben it just is like in his bones yeah i love that and that's time ben well that was very sweet thank you and thank you eric for making uh, them tell, compliment tell me for now. two minutes no that's the thing I mean, that, the very point yeah, is that I he know. doesn't tell it's not that he tells it was like oh he's just naturally funny it's not like he's out there trying to be funny and sam said let's end this on tell us a knock knock yeah, joke. Exactly. that was a joke that no Ooh, no no this is very interesting work. season one has just ended this yeah, took yeah, exactly as long as what a moment now subscribe to nebula yeah and subscribe to nebula subscribe to chat like guys thanks so much for making time this is a lot of fun and that's it all right, let me take some quick thumbnail photos in the next minute, and then I'll let you guys go. Well, so then COVID hit, and I was in my junior year of college. Wait, we should we should explain we should explain. Um, oh, wait, I forget. I forget. Oh, sorry. I know I was mixing up the two of you. I was mixing what? up the two of you. Does that what? happen often? No, no, no. Because I was going to explain the bit of how I ended up being introduced to you originally no 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 yeah that's not yeah that was wait, that was me no, no that was well, that was you i was uh, it's uh, sorry mind fart cut that i'm actually we will mind we, fart we, we could cut i've that. never even heard that well, term i'm before. actually very intrigued and i want to dive more into this i'm curious have you ever mixed has he ever mixed the two of you up together yes mm -hmm. how yeah. so in what context do you mean well i do that i well not necessarily I, I do this for everyone at the company well the problem the problem is we have an alex and we have an adam um um, in, in our company and we don't have a very big company. Um, so I often say Alex when I mean Adam and vice versa. Yeah. Um, and I think there probably have been instances that the, the nice thing is like, don't let them hear this, but they're pretty much interchangeable. Um, since they pretty much work on the same stuff. Right. You so, so like if I, if I ben, want to, yeah. if I want to ask something to Adam, I can pretty much just ask it to Ben and it's fine. So they don't notice when I mess it up. Uh, yeah, that's probably true. It's the truest form of praise you can give to someone. You're both very fungible. Well, it's because they work but, so well together. But only between each other. Right, yeah. yeah. You can't funge us with any other kind of <laughs> Yeah, people. we're only fungible. Uh, you can only, we can only get funged mm -hmm. uh, just the two of us. Um, yeah, anyway, 